Jesse Lakes, I'm a Montana boy, uh, born in Whitefish, grew up in Hamilton, had the pleasure of meeting Mario in high school. Uh, went to college up here at the University of Montana, took some of Jackie's classes, um, had five years of fun. And uh, starting in 1999, for the, the following 10 years, I, I tried and failed 14 times. I had 14 different projects that ultimately failed. Eh, failure is a, is a loose term, but what I want to talk about today is just kind of the evolution of ideas. And, and those early ideas, uh, they, were, they were great failures, but they really kind of were the stepladder for these next ideas. So in 1999, graduated from high school, took some of my, uh, my college or high school graduation money and bought my first domain name and bought some hosting on ICS, the, the local server here. And uh, I started a, a web development company. And the whole idea was, oh, HTML is fun. Websites are cool. Why don't I try to make some money at this? And clients are a pain in the ass. So that, that definitely failed. Um, <laughs> 2001 rolls around, it had a little bit of school. Um, so Chris and, and Mario, we, uh, I started the idea, and I, I definitely brought these guys in early on. We had this old Nifty Tricks media, and Bjorn remembers this one. Um, the whole idea was I was going to create this, this Bible of extreme sports, and I, I loved playing outside. I, I definitely enjoyed kayaking and snowboarding, all the things that Missoula has to offer. But I wanted to kind of take all this, this media, these pictures, these videos, and create this website. And, I was going to sell ads. It was at the height of the dot-com era, I was, I was going to be a millionaire. It was going to be brilliant. That definitely didn't work out. Selling ads failed miserably. Um, but I, I, I took my first real step into affiliate marketing. We had a question earlier about affiliate marketing. And just a, a real quick sidestep, affiliate marketing is, is when you do marketing, but you don't get paid until a sale actually happens. You, you are responsible. You, you don't get anything until that happens. So as it it a, a publisher, it's, it's a hard way to make money. But it was kind of my first foray into it, and I hated it. It, it, it sucked. I didn't make any money. Nifty tricks. As much fun as it was, and as often as it got me out on the river, it didn't do anything. Next kind of project was uh, this, this blog, D Sounds. And again, this is Mario and I kind of collaborating. You know, Mario, oh, look at, look at this blogging thing. It's blowing up, you know, 2004. Go start a blog. Find some niche thing and, and start a blog and just start writing things. And you'll, you'll sell AdSense, and it'll be great. And I tried it, and yeah, no, it didn't work out. AdSense sucked. Chris is able to pull it off brilliantly. I, I never could. But it was kind of my first foray, not only to affiliate marketing, but into iTunes affiliate marketing. So D sounds all about digital music, iTunes this big digital store. OK, it made sense. Didn't go anywhere. A few years later, 2006, so I've graduated from college now. I've got this kind of endless summer thing going. Um, so Mario was right. I would spend my summers in, in Colorado working as a raft guide. In the fall, I'd come back to Montana, crash my parents' house, work on some sort of geek project. Winter, I'd head down to Costa Rica, work down as there as a guide. Spring, come back up to Montana, geek and then back, back to Colorado. And it was this, this great period. But during this period, I, I put, a, put a few ideas together, and I, I created these uh, websites for extreme sports soundtracks. So you take your, your favorite Warren Miller film, and you list out all 50 songs, and you use links to iTunes and links to Amazon to, for people to buy the songs, the albums. And it it's kind of started to catch on. It was, it was kind of cool. There was actually money coming from all the other projects I made with probably within the first week, more money than I made in my previous six ventures or so forth ventures, projects, whatever you want to call them. So it was really cool. It was, it was fun. So I was able to work on these during the fall. That was kind of the big you know, skiing time. And st uh, did a snowboarding website as well. After a while, I did a surfing one. Kind of had this, this collection of websites. So these are running. They're making a little bit of money. I start buying myself you know, the, you know, the, the, the extra paddle so I can go kayaking or, or whatever it was. It wasn't enough to live off of, but it was, it was definitely enough to keep me pretty, pretty excited. 2008 kind of rolls around. and. Um, this, this endless summer thing was great. Met a beautiful woman, decided I wasn't going to do the whole Costa Rica thing this year. I was going to stick around in Colorado. Um, so I, I, I took some of, those money, some of that money from the soundtrack and, and dumped it back into uh, to a friend, Jesse Pashnik, who is a, a close friend of, of us, another U of M graduate. And I had him kind of build me this, this back end of the server. So instead of doing all the HTML myself, it's going to be kind of this automated process. As we're doing this, we spent oh, four months working on it. He's got, a, he's got a day job. I'm working on it every day. We, we really kind of dove deep into this iTunes affiliate program and into the Amazon Associates program because we knew that was a revenue model that worked. And it was, I hated it at first, but once you kind of figure out how it works, it's, it's pretty cool. You know, you get paid when someone buys a song, so send someone to, to buy a song. Make sure they're excited about it. And as we're diving into this, I, I just start compiling notes, and it's, it's this great experience. The website's done. 2009 rolls around. And I've got the spring. I'm not going down to Costa Rica. I'm not going to go back to, um, to Hamilton, to Montana. So I take all my notes, and I start writing this book. You know, I've always wanted to write a book. It would be, there was no other documentation out there. It was, it was just, it was a nightmare trying to put together. So I was, I was going to fill this need. There was, you know, Jackie talked about kind of these, these steps, and I would, I think, fairly fast in regards to, you know, the, the process that she had. But sat down every, every morning at a coffee shop and, and wrote until the laptop battery died and would go home and just kind of research some more and, and keep working on it. While I'm doing this, I'm writing this book, I'm also 
kind of watching these websites, and they're, they're growing exponentially as far as traffic, but my, my sales aren't growing the same way. And I, I had this epiphany one morning as I'm walking to the coffee shop. It's, there's something broken here. There's something fundamentally broken here. And when the problem was that even though I was getting all this international traffic, I was only earning commissions in, in the U.S., even though sales were happening in, in Germany and in, in Australia, wherever across the world, there, was, there wasn't something happening. So again, Jesse Pash and I, you know, we, we hop on the phone, we talk about it, and we figure out there's this geographic fragmentation issue. So we kind of figure out, oh, okay, well, we can do this and this, and we can, yeah, yeah no problem. So we, we kind of add this module to the soundtrack websites, and this, this module eventually becomes GeoRite. We're going to kind of put that on the side right now. Book, publish, or it's coming together. Spring ends, summer begins, it's rafting time again. Uh, hired hired an um, editor to kind of clean up the book. Hired a graphic designer to put a cover on it. I start laying it out. It took most all summer to lay it out. End of August rolls around, rafting starts to slow down. Finally have the book together. It, I'm, I'm getting really excited about publishing this. You know, first book, it, I put a lot of time and effort into it. And there's a, a few different names, a few different people that I'd found through LinkedIn or through, through different channels. So I sent them copies of the books. You know, I know you're using this affiliate program. I know there's not a lot of documentation, not a lot of resources. Check this out. I think you're really going to like it. I, I think you're, it's going to be pretty cool. So it was this courtesy email. And uh, it, was, it was 9.40, August 24th. I got an email. Paul, you probably remember this email. And it, it reads, we will not allow you to publish this, Jesse. We know nothing about the project. We have not the time over the next 10 days to review this. Please halt all work on this project immediately. I'm forwarding this now the Apple legal department. <laughs> and I'm, oh shit, what have I done? This is Apple legal. Whose toes have I stepped on? All this work, all this time, all this, this blood, sweat, and tears, is, it's gone. And not only is it gone, but I've pissed someone off. I've pissed off, pissed off Apple. You know, I've always been an Apple fanboy. So I, I, unfortunately, I got this email five minutes before I had to go rafting for the day. I spent all day just stressing out. And, you know, I'm screwed. Get home, uh, read my email again. It's the same woman that sent the first note. She wants to, she wants to call. And again, I'm, 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 okay. It can't get any worse from here. So <laughs> hop on the call. You know, the first 30 seconds are very civil, very polite. The next 45 minutes are just screaming, <laughs> yelling back and forth. It was, it was pretty brutal. Um, at the end of it, thankfully, we, we came to an agreement. They're going to have a month, month and a half to review it. Okay, I'm, I'm no problem. I'll, I'll give them that. I have to take out the names of the people I specifically referenced in the book. And I, I can understand that, respect for their, their processes and so forth. If I you know, give a name and email address, they'll get bombarded with emails, blah, blah, blah. Okay, fine. So enough of this stuff again. About a month goes by, nothing. Didn't hear anything. I start pinging them. And now when I, I start sending emails, they start getting returned quickly. And the tone is much nicer. And th there was this fundamental change. They, they had actually started to dig into the book, all 160 pages. And I had two spelling errors and, and one minor issue where I referenced something incorrectly. The whole fear when this lady yelled at me for 45 minutes is that I was spreading misinformation. I hadn't a clue. How could I know something better than any of the Apple engineers? I, I had become the subject matter expert, and she was petrified that it was, it was the wrong information. So what does she do? She, she offers me a contracting gig. She, she can't manage the program by herself, but she really needs some help managing the US program. So Jesse, we're going to pay you twice what you make as a RAF guy, eh, even more than that. You know, you're going to work as a contractor 30, 40 hours a week. You, know, you set the schedule. You continue on your geek projects. Awesome. You can live in Colorado, fly out to California once a month. I was ecstatic. This was, this was awesome. You know, I could continue on with my passion. I could work on the, the projects. And there was a real revenue source. I wouldn't have to rely on this beautiful woman for, for meals out all the time. <laughs> it, was, it was pretty cool. So um, November 7th, 2009 is, is my first trip down to California. I, I walk in there. It's, it's great. Start kind of asking questions. What am I going to do? What's, what's going on? How's the program? And it's, it's broken. In the last two days, um, the way the affiliate program works for iTunes is it all relies on this, this cookie that's set. And that cookie lets you know that sales need to be affiliated back to this person. That cookie was, was screwed up. But of course, no one knew that. And the, the program had completely gone from making lots of money to, to absolutely nothing. There was these major partners that were very important to the iTunes ecosystem. They were complaining. They were pissed. Things just weren't working. It was, it was a total shit show. Walked in there, and it was, it was trial by fire. You know, spent a week there learning as much as I can. I think that the most important thing I actually took away from that is I was able to figure out who the main support person was, who the main engineering person was. And I ripped them out of their office. We went across the street to the bar. And we sat there for three hours drinking beer and brain dumping. What's that? JVs. Uh, exactly. <laughs> BJs. Yeah. Um, 
So I, I left, spent the next six weeks working on, on fixing these problems. Um, that my next trip out to California was, was in mid-December. Well, these problems were so big that the, the senior vice president of, of iTunes, of Internet Services, Eddie Q, had made a mandate that this is never going to happen again. The affiliate program is too important now to let it fall apart. We need someone to globally manage this program. So I come back in, in mid-December. I'm a little, yeah, I know something's changing. You know, maybe I'm going to have a new boss, whatever. Turns out there's a short list for this, this position, um, this full-time position at Apple. And there's one name on the list, and it's me. <laughs> and it was, it was pretty exciting. Towards the end of the trip, I got an offer letter. And I've never had an offer letter before in my life. I've never had a real job in my life. I've always been very adverse to a commute in a cubicle. I'm, I'm a bum. I'm, I'm an entrepreneur at heart. But there's this shiny white envelope and this, this beautiful Apple emblem. And I open it up. It's six figures. It's health care, or health insurance. I hadn't health, had health insurance for quite a while. It was a moving package from Colorado. It was, it was the stock vesting plan that, that blew my mind. But it, was, it was pretty impressive. So of course, yeah, I, I can sell off for that. I, I, can, I can join Apple. <laughs> Chan and I move out to, to uh, California, uh, January 2010. And that started this, this two-year sprint. I, I knew it was, I had to work. I knew there was a lot to be done. I made, made a certain agreement with myself that I was always going to beat my manager in the morning. And I was never going to leave until after she'd been gone. I worked weekends. I worked evenings. I was always on call. It was, it was a lot of work. But it was really cool. It was, it was pretty awesome to kind of you know, have, have seen this program from the outside and know its potential, but now to be on the inside and kind of start to fix things, to, to have those processes, to have the documentation, to grow the program, know its strengths, know its benefits, and, and kind of just move it forward. And we did some really cool things in those two years. We continued to expand the programs, made some, some great connections. I worked with some amazing people. I mean, no disrespect to the RAF guides, I, I love them. But working with absolutely brilliant people is one of the coolest things you can ever do. So I made a ton of friends, and I learned a lot. And, and honestly, my story could end right here. I, it was a great experience. I'm, I'm now fat and happy. I'm enjoying the best of the California wines. I've got a savings account that's growing much quicker than it ever has in the past. Um, I, I was getting. I was doing well, so I was getting bonuses and more stock and so forth. But I had an idea. That, that idea, that whole geo right thing where something is fundamentally broken, kind of just kept burning in the back of my head. And as iTunes was ex continuing to expand, as the affiliate programs were continuing to expand, the problems were compounding in this whole global fragmentation problem. So what do you do when you have this, this idea burning in the back of your head? You're fat and happy at a job. You put in your termination. It was. <laughs> It was, it was hard. It was, it was really hard to say goodbye to a lot of friends. It was, it was really hard to, to leave that great salary and all those stock options to say goodbye to them. But I did um, in January. Yeah, February this year, goodbye to Apple. I'm, I'm back on this, this GeoRiot project. And it's, it's honestly been absolutely amazing. I'm in the position now that I dreamed about with cyberfixation, with nifty tricks, with these sounds. I've got a project that's growing quickly. Haven't earned my first paycheck yet, but that's coming soon. But it's, there's, there's such huge potential, and we're, we're really excited to be kind of one of the front runners in, in what we're doing, and things are moving. It's, it's great to be here in Missoula. And I, I think kind of back to that whole evolution of ideas, it wasn't, it wasn't one project. It was this idea, one after another. And ultimately, they failed, but it was, I, I learned things. I, I, had, I built this quiver of skills. And I was having that quiver of skills, and then having this, this book that put me at Apple that allowed me to have all these connections. It's really allowing Geo right, right now to blow up. Without those connections before, nothing would have ever happened. So I encourage you to you know, just keep moving forward, keep, keep innovating. If it doesn't work, move on. You know, fail quickly, fail whatever you're going to do, just, just keep going. Um, so I, I want to kind of just close things out with a, a quote. And actually, I didn't hear this quote until my first day at Apple. I think it's a pretty good one. You can't connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect them looking backwards. So you have to trust the dots will somehow connect in your future. You have to trust in something, your gut, destiny, life, karma, whatever. This approach has never let me down, and it's made all the difference in my life. Steve Jobs, 2005. So, thank you.